Hi, we're Ian and Julie. Follow us on our tiny homestead and our debt-free project of a lifetime, the building of our shipping container home here in the Pyrenees, and all of this alongside our full-time jobs. Hi there, welcome back to the channel. Well, we are back to work on the plot today. Um, got the little mini skid. I've just given them a good clean off, got all the mud out of the tracks because I don't want it all coming off again. Um, we have got to move all of that, all the concrete, everything else has got to come over onto the driveway here. And in conjunction with that, to make it a bit easier, all of this soil that we took from around the corner there, we've got to put down here. So we're going to try and form the driveway a little bit more. Well, we've spread all of that concrete rubble, again from my son's pool project. We've just spread it all across here. After banking up the two sides with earth to try and get some sort of height datum, level. basically <laughs> height datum, yeah. but um, there's some big chunks in here. So I've got my whacker plate. We're just gonna have to... I think we just need to level it out a little bit, just yeah. sort out some lumps and then Ian can come and whacker it. But, oh, it looks awful at the moment. <laughs> We've just created a huge mess. But unless you, we pack it out with this stuff, yeah. it'll just be hundreds of tons of, uh, of the gravels. Very warm work. Well, sort of flattened out, but we need some gravel now to fill in all the bits. Oh my gosh, it is warm. All right, I think a drink of water. I think I might just put the kit away for today. Oh. I think King's rather addicted to this uh, mini steer. Even though if I zoomed in on his face. <laughs> Future project where the retaining wall from the garage workshop is, it returns here, and we've purposely left it like that because where this soil height is, maybe just a little bit higher on these rocks, we're going to continue another retaining wall along there, and it'll eventually just fade out at that rock. Traffic jam, the dogs are in the way. Not 
feeling very glamorous today, making the most of a cooler day. I'm away from the off-grid plot. I've been busy cutting and trimming all my fruit trees. So we've brought the tractor home, helped me move all of this. And uh, whilst I've got the tractor, I'm going to empty Tyson's stable and get that all sorted. And there's something in the background I've been neglecting. That's going to change this week. Spring's here. More concrete being dug up from my son's house. We've only got this bit left, but uh, we're going up each time and just reversing down the driveway and dumping it just here. This is where we're dumping it all and the levels are coming up now. I think we've had eight trail loads today. So uh, I think it's time for some nice 020 gravel to basically even it all off. Today, with the help of my little sausages, Floki and Freya, in the back of the trailer, <laughs> I've got this tiny little trailer attached to my ride-on lawnmower. So we're now in Tyson's Field, heading to the polytunnel, and that's where I'm hoping to spend the majority of today getting my polytunnel organised, because spring is moving fast here and I'm getting left behind so I must get on get my polytunnel started and I have something to show you which I'm embarrassed about but we've been spending more time up on the off-grid plot with all our infrastructure build and this side of things my veggie garden has slipped a little bit but I can't be everywhere plus working so here goes Today is Julie's day with Floki and Freya in the polytunnel. Where are we? Are we in the field? Where's Tyson? We made it, so I guess it's time to... Re oh, no, he's gone without me. You little stinker. Ooh, it's warm in here. Oof. Uh, this was all cleared. Ian's busy breaking up concrete, uh, more concrete from our son's project in his garden that we're using on the off-grid plot to raise our drive level. So I've left Ian and Lewis, our son, breaking up concrete and everything. So I'm here with Floki and Freya in the polytunnel. It's looking a bit sad because I have neglected it. So today get this all tidy cleaned up and in a snap of my fingers hopefully it looks a little healthier let's see if it works magic please we need a breather from the polytunnel it's hot so we're just heading home for a quick lunch break and uh, we'll be back at it Ooh, and all the cherry blossoms out on the trees thought I'd come and surprise uh, Mr Wright and our son I've taken a break from the polytunnel and just Hopped on my bike to come and see them, and I've just got here in time. Uh, we've lost count how many times Lewis and Ian have come up this morning. But here's another load. In total, what? 15 loads. Um, Not today, just think anything. Project Swimming Pool, Lewis. You're helping your mum and dad. And I'm having far too much fun on this new electric bike. battery now and the solar well I think it needs Ian to come and have a little look at it for me a bit of TLC but in the meantime I've got this cable that I keep up here and I'll show you what I'm using that for I'm just going to unplug the one that comes directly from the solar battery and using this cable connect the two and then connect it to my battery pack Uh, 
our water timer unit um, it's always in automatic it's the first time it's been used this year so I'm just going to change it to manual using the hand and then OK and turn the water supply on and all this water is coming from all the IDC units that we have along here from collected from the roof on the top of Tyson's Field Shelter Oh, Changing back to manual, my little hand. Okay. Click and turn. Oh, it's working. Let's go and see what we get. Will I have water? We have. We've got water dripping. Now the water irrigation system's up and running, it's all working, I've got no blocks anywhere. Oh, I can start my planting. I had lunch, come back and I made a start on cleaning up a few of those rogue tomato plants. So I've managed to plant one complete row of tomatoes, so that's going to be my lucky dip as to what these ones are and every two tomato plants I'm putting marigolds I did go to the market at our local town and I just got a few a few bits and pieces. I didn't go too crazy. I could have done, but I didn't because I wasn't sure how far I'd actually um, progress in the polytunnel. So to get me started, I managed to get um, just a few, I think three aubergine plants just to get me going. So I'll plant those here. So I've got three. I think these are the, the, the long black aubergines. I have got some seeds that I will start, which are the more shorter, stubby, fatter aubergines. But these are the only ones on offer at the market. So they'll do for now. And as for salad, I just picked up three different types of lettuce. It's a bit pathetic, I know. There's only four of each. But I've got um, little, whoops, all joined, little ready coloured ones. I don't know any of the names. A wiggly green one and a more broad leaf. This particular one, it grow, it's just all leaves. They're just broad leaves that come up. I have no idea what the names of them are, but there you go. There's 12 lettuces there. Oops. Um, what else in my basket? I couldn't resist. I bought some. Um, I bought beetroot. Now this particular beetroot, this is the one where, when you cut it in half, you see all those rings, the pink and the white rings. Now they're really pretty for salads. So I thought if I buy some of these ready started, I'm just that little step ahead of myself for when I start preparing meals for guests when they the cycling season starts because as you know I do all the evening meals for the guests that stay here so this is part of my salad progress and a few days ago well nearly, nearly a week ago I bought some lettuces from the local shop in the village and yeah it rained and it actually snowed yesterday we had very bizarre weather yesterday so I forgot to um, protect them so they got a bit battered but in here they'll spring back they look a bit sad and sorry for themselves at the moment but they will spring back and that's what they are there I've got a tray of those so now I've planted my marigolds and a row of tomatoes I'm going to start alternating the lettuces along the tomatoes now I've left a gap at the front because I'm thinking somewhere in my seed box on the top there 
I've still got a packet of basil seeds so I like to plant a lot of basil next to the tomatoes also so I'll try and get some basil seeds set today as well in a tray but first things first plant what I've got now that bed I'm just purely dedicating to peppers so that's something I need to get on with is seed some pepper plants and some cucumbers so we'll do that now now that I've got all my starter plants in the polytunnel they're looking great now one last job I'd like to do this evening is make a start on setting some seeds now as I mentioned I'd like to do some cucumbers in my second row so I have two varieties I'm only going to plant eight cucumbers so four of each to start with otherwise I'll be overwhelmed with cucumbers and as these get going just before they start producing too many fruits then I'll get another um, set of seeds on the go that will take me through the second half of the um, growing season so I'm going to start with my two cucumbers and in this tray again to get me started because I have another variety of peppers but these ones we absolutely love these type of peppers so I'm going to get two four six eight ten of these set get them going and then tomorrow I'll make I'll come back in and I'll make a start on some bell peppers so this is my project for this evening I'll crack on get these done I've got my potting compost here the seat a little look it's um a really fine type that you use for setting your seeds in so i'll get this start all this done and show you when i've finished he's just phoned me he's packing up he's been digging all day up on the off-grid plot so i guess it's getting quite late now it's nearly tea time now i'm going to head back home get cleaned up so i don't think he's going to appreciate these hands cooking tea tonight but oh i'm super happy i've got my polytunnel back under control and we're growing things okay then catch you tomorrow on your knees just got back and she's just finishing off so i'll meet her back at the house I made it back from the polytunnel and it's time now to give my little girls there they are oh I love these little cheeky chickens hello ladies here's your mum yes treat time ah, ah, no escapees uh, I've just got some hay and I've hidden treats in the hay something for them to scratch around in and just to keep them busy what's in there girlies Ooh. Oh, I know. Have a look. Just open the nest box up, and it looks like they've done all their eggs in one box. Five today. Good girls. He's back in. Just in time before the big storm. <laughs> right, quick project this morning is to cut off the top of this uh, pallet fork and also to reduce the size of these forks themselves because as you can see, without anything on, <laughs> these are so, so heavy. So basically they're worthless. Right, that's one side. Julie might have to uh, take the weight of this one because it's uh, this is a heavy bit of kit.
So I think what I'm going to do is cut these pallets in two. So I'll have several mini pallets. Um, I can get 11 blocks on if stacked very close to the, uh, the front of the skid steer, so in twos. Um, so 11, that's 200 kilo, which, you know, for this little machine, 200 kilo plus probably 100 kilo of uh, forks. Um, that sounds about right. But because it's on bumpy ground, you know, it, it keeps on rocking. So then I, I just nip the edge of the pallet and it starts to slide off. But as long as I can just get them around and move them wherever I need them, that's all it's for. Well, I've just moved all those logs from down at the bottom up to here because this is where we're planning to put this little retaining wall just here. They've been there quite a while, probably two years now. Um, I'm hoping they'll be okay. We'll get rid of all the, uh, the rotten bark and things like that and all the bugs. And then Julian will douse them with her oil diesel mix. Don't worry, it's not going to any eating plants and we're going to put some... Um, fabric and things are around them to try and protect them but it's all we've got at the moment just to uh, keep this soil back and once they rot out we'll have a bit more time and money and whatever to uh, change them out for something else so they're all out of the way i'm now going to go back get rid of the forks put the bucket on and get some of that that um, earth up against that driveway and then hopefully i'll be able to drive up that way instead of all the way around busy bringing all the soil over here I'm trying to rake as much of it back as possible towards the gabions I'm just putting big boulders ah oh here's a big one as I find them next to the wall to hold the fabric up for extra drainage and also just to give me a bit of a line to uh, get my soil to I've made a start at leveling this out it does need more top soil on and it will come out more but that soil is going to be here when we start digging out for the house and there's Ian still beavering away digging out the bank ready for a small retaining wall along there before we have the footings for the house dug out let's go see what he's up to I'm going to change these tracks out. This is probably the sixth time it's come off properly. Um, it's come off a couple of times where I've managed to get it back on while moving, but the stones and because it's coming off is damaged all of these little nipple things underneath. So it's every time I turn, just on this one track. So I'll order some new ones, get them delivered and get them changed over. Ah, it's annoying. I've stopped swearing now, but at least I know how to do it. I've even modified my little jack there so um, it doesn't slip off. Well, done, 
but I've run out of grease. So it's a bit floppy, but I think it will get me to the garage. Now I'm going to try. Ah, there we go. It's all about getting this height up. So I've got to figure out a better way in the field to get this whoop, this up. But uh, it's done. Right. Let's get him back in the garage and I'll get those tracks ordered. Doing the levels along this wall just to see if I do a drop or anything, but um, it seems pretty good. It's within a couple of centimeters, so with a bit of a scrape with a spade, we should be able to get these footings in quite well. Um, the skid steer is great when you put it on the level, and it just it just goes in a nice flat. You can see the amount I've taken out here. There was a big hump here, but all of that is pretty flat. So we will start. I think we're going to have to take a bit more earth out. Um, to get the forms in but after that we should be good to go so I think we'll leave the video there for today um, lots of earth moving we've started the polytunnel at last and um, we're gonna sort of get this form work done next time but also we've got a, another project we're gonna start and finish off the back of the garage so uh, a couple of things coming up in the next uh, few videos so we'll see you next time give us a thumbs up Hit that subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And me and Julie, we'll see you in the next video. See you for now.